So welcome to the first installment of What Do I Do series. What do I do if I tweak my back? That's what we're going to talk about today. So through the site and through a lot of our friends, I get a lot of texts about, hey, I think I tweaked my back. What do I do now? So here's the game. First and foremost, remember, if you're getting a little bit of pain in an area, that's a polite request for change, right? Your body's saying, hey, you need to pay attention to behavior. Now, I don't know what caused your pain. Could be that you just overextended or you lost position for a second or your body perceived that position at that load and speed as a threat. It doesn't matter. You could be high stress in your life. You could be hungover and sleep deprived and hypohydrated and eaten like a spoiled child and all of a sudden it doesn't take much for your body to be like, I'm not putting up with this. So if this happens to you and you feel like, oh, tweak my back a little bit, first and foremost, let's, let's, let's slow down and take a second. If you turned your ankle, you wouldn't freak out. You would just think, I just turned my ankle. It happens sometimes, right? But somehow around the spine, especially around the neck or the low back, which, which really sometimes gets our attention, we think differently about this, right? I have a lot of friends who will run with terrible knee pain, but if they ever tweak their back, life's over. And you can imagine why, because your spine is, really houses your nervous system. And a threat to the nervous system is a primary threat to the human being, because if you tweak your back, tweak your CNS, you're not walking around, you're not reproducing, you're not hunting. So your brain perceives that as very first order, order of kind of set of problems. So first and foremost, don't panic. Let's just treat it like, hey, you just are out of position. It's like you hyperextend your elbow for a second. So you're probably going to get okay again. But in the meantime, what do I do about it? So let's appreciate that pain doesn't even mean tissue damage. It just means you just maybe have turned your ankle or put yourself into a position that your nervous system said, nah, -uh. And it went into lockdown, spasm, whatever the, the compensation mechanisms that your body is now trying to protect. The Things that we would care about and the questions I ask my friends are, well, do you have any numbness and tingling in your legs? Do you have any problems in your saddle area? Is your penis numb? That's usually concern for, uh, or cause for concern, right? Do you have any problems you cough, sneeze, or swallow, right? Are you having changes in your bladder or bowel function? If those are the cases, let's go get that checked out. Let's go, uh, let's go talk to a doc about it, right? Because there may be something else going on. But the rest of the time, most of the time, it's not what's going on. You just have some pain in your back or you're feeling like you can't breathe or you're twisted or, or cranky. So we belong first is that we gotta calm down. So one of the things we wanna do is give some input back into the body that says, hey look, everything's okay. The best way that we know for this is walking. So walking is such an important way to restore and calm things down. And if you're in lockdown mode, that may be a one minute walk, lay down, put your feet up, one minute walk, lay down, put your feet up. So the first order of business is to calm this down. I love kind of breathing exercises here. We love constant pressure here. And if you go into the YouTube, there's like tons of videos that I've done about pelvic faults, pelvic tweaks. It's common, so let me, this is an important distinction because sometimes physical therapists lose their mind when someone comes in and says they have an obliquity in the pelvis or rotation in the pelvis, causing their chronic pain. But I will tell you that a billion times, that's an exaggeration, a million times, we have seen an athlete, for whatever reason, one hip is tighter, a little stiffer, one foot turned out, and they end up with a little bit of a quick rotation in the pelvis. And that out of position thing, falls into the line of that we borrowed from Ida Wall, Rolf, who says, if something's not in the right position, get it in the right position. And she followed that up with, if something's not moving, let's get it moving. So the first order of business is that we do that push and pull technique. And you can go right in, I'm sure there's a link here somewhere, but a little bit of isometrics of getting your hips to work, that's all we're doing, those are general isometrics, of flexion and extension and a little bit of adduction, right, can do a lot to use your musculature to potentially put that pelvis back in position, AKA once something's rotated and now it's not. You don't even have to have the fancy tests, just push and pull isometrics. We've done tons of videos on that pelvic, pelvic fault. And if it's not that, guess what? you're still putting some isometrics or input into the system. So it turns out then, if something's in spasm, you know where it is, constant pressure, putting a little pressure on that, doing some contract, relax, breathing. Right where now, what we appreciate is that your brain and your body are in threat mode, right? So the idea here is we don't need hardcore inputs in here, we want to just chill out. So walking, 
really managing the kind of big picture things that around that you can manage. Uh, constant pressure. We love gut smashing, making sure that the uh, we're addressing. Uh, breathing, we're addressing uh, pelvic obliquity, and all of a sudden what you realize is, man, if I had access to something like uh, a Mark Pro or an H-Wave where I could just decongest, but a lot of times these, these devices like PowerDot even are basically putting non-threatening input back into the system, which is what we're always trying to do when we have a threat, right? So if I'm getting a muscle contraction in a system or an area that's perceiving itself as threatened, right, and, I, and the brain's suddenly saying, oh, look at all this pulling, this motion without movement. That's really what's happening there, all these isometrics, all this contraction. And all of a sudden, we get, we get um, motion without movement, and the brain's like, oh, I see, we're moving again, right? Things are turned back on. So first and foremost, when you tweak your back, don't panic. Um, don't ice your back. Let's maybe get some gentle heat, let's get some gentle motion, and then stay in some pain-free ranges. Don't be afraid to, uh, to restore that movement. Usually in two or three days, you'll be right as rain. And you can certainly ask for help at any time, right? But the bottom line is, what do I do? Well, first and foremost, let's get you some walk-in, let's see if we can normalize that thing. And of course, how do I get out of pain? Well, our favorite way, on your back, feet straight up the wall. Let, the, let yourself chill, get back into your Wim Hof breathing, get back into your XPT breathing, get back to your Betrayco breathing. Big inhales, long, slow exhales. That's the model. Big inhales, long, slow exhales. Telling your brain it's not a threat. When you have that acute, sudden lifting pain, right, your brain is trying to protect you, and you've got to give messages back to the brain that everything's going to be okay. Hopefully, this gives you a game plan.